So I'll try to cover the prediction analysis in R um, in the short screencast. First of all, you need to go into Dropbox folder um, titled 6870 for this class and uh, go into R predictions and find this R script, prediction underscore earnings. Make sure to copy it over to your local folder without dragging it out of this folder, okay? And get also the earnings underscore 020414 CSV file and copy it over as well. Once you've done that, go ahead and install these packages. There are two ways to install packages in R. First is just install that pack, uh, packages and then in parentheses the name of the package you want to install. Or you can go manually um, from tools, install packages, and type it up manually. And then just click on it and then install. I've done this already, so I'm not going to install them again. However, Every single time you start a session that hasn't saved the previous session, you need to, um, after installing it, you need to call the libraries. You don't need to install it again once you have done it. But every session you need to call the library. So once you do that, we're ready to get started with the code. So first of all, we're reading the file, earnings, uh, CSV file into earnings variable just a random name, you can change it if you want to. Then we, once we do that, we have to check if it works correctly. So you can see nine variables, 50,000 observations, which is 50,000 rows. So that's correct. If yours is the same, continue with the second line of the code. So in this second line of code shows that we want only a subset of this data set because 50,000 is too big for the example. So we want to just a subset of the data set, which means from 1 till 10,000 rows. So, as you can see, the number of variables, which is the number of columns, is the same, 9, but the number of observations is shorter, it's only 10,000. How you do it is you type up the variable name that contains the entire file, which is earnings, then you put the square brackets and before the comma indicates the number of rows, so you say from 1 till 10,000. You can start from whatever number you want, in just in this case I selected one. Then after the comma, it indicates the subset of the columns. In this case, I want all the columns to carry over. Okay. So then we attach the file, the subset file, because from now on, for the rest of the code, we are going to use earnings subset only. So we attach the file. Then we go ahead and look at the columns. So there are some columns. If we double click, we'll see there's some columns like ID, um, marital status, and interest and wage columns that we don't need. And the reason being that we're going to use the total personal income, so we don't need those two columns. And as for the marital status, um, we need it to be numeric, and here it is not numeric. Um, it is. Uh, it will throw off the analysis that we're going to do. And also ID does not mean anything. It is already numeric, but it will screw, um, screw up the analysis by skewing the results because these numbers will be written as numeric while we want it to be as factor. Okay. So we go ahead and decide. There are several ways to delete um, columns. So first way is right here. Second way is down below. First way is when you want to just count the indexes. So you count this one two, three, four, five. So you need to get rid of the one, five, six, and seven. So you go ahead and type up, again, just a variable name, whatever you want to call it. In this case, we're calling it earnings for prediction. Then we take our data set, which is earnings subset, and again, square brackets, comma, because we want to keep the rows, as you remember right here. But now we're getting rid of the columns. So we say minus, which is get rid of these selection. First column, then we want the columns 5 through 7. Okay, so once you select that and run this, you'll see that the number of columns or variables went down to 5. The same will happen with this line of code, except in this case you don't, if you're lazy to count the, na the numbers of the indexes of the columns, you can just type up the names of the columns right here whichever ones you want to get rid of. And this 
is done by the names function. So once they're done, and don't use both of them, just choose one of those you want. Um, this is just an example we're giving you for your further uh, work, just in case you need this. So after that, you know uh, we have some missing data in this data set because this is just a random dump of a data that we got from um, .gov, um, data.gov website and so we need to get rid of the missing values because the analysis we, we're going to do, especially random forest analysis, is not, um, it can't handle missing values so we need to either assign it to zero which will in this case um, skew our analysis or get rid of all the data that are missing, so all the rows that have missing data. So we run this and we can see that the 10,000 went down to 78. So now we cleaned up the data set, now we're ready to actually do the analysis. First of all, we're doing the traditional linear regression. So for that, you can see this is just a dummy variable name that we assigned. Linear regression, it's LM. Then the first goes the, um, the response variable the variable that we're trying to predict, which in our case is total personal income in 2000. Then we have earnings prediction. So that's our data set that we're getting it from. And as you remember, this is the one that we used last to clean up. So let's run this. Once you run it, you don't see anything unless you call summary on LS. So you do that. And as you can see, these are our variables, age, education year, gender, union members. We should have actually gotten rid of union members as well, because as you can see, it's no or yes. So that is not read incorrectly either. But for, for the moment, it, it doesn't really matter. We can see that from asterisk and the significance of the codes is right here. Um, from the asterisks, we can see that all of them are significant. And so we can continue doing the analysis, um, doing logistic regression in this case, on the same data. So logistic regression is done with JLM. JLM. Uh, I think we have gotten that already. Yep, JLM. So we have this package already, JLM. Um, we get gender and total personal income then age as a, for the prediction. Then for the data, we get again the earnings for prediction and then run this code. To see again, we need to call the summary of the fit and we'll see the results right here. So to go, to go back to the previous um, linear regression and in the results, I forgot to mention the results, how to interpret this. Um, estimate is one of the important um, cons to look at. And what it means is, for example, if you look at the age, it means for every age, for every one year going up, there is $32 you add. Or if we look into the gender, it's negative, which means we coded uh, females to be 1 and males to be 0. So this means that uh, in earnings are, um, the earnings are negatively affecting, um, the gender is negatively affecting the earnings. So being female takes away $754 approximately. So going back to logistic regression that we ran, we can see that total uh, personal income is counted as, um, in this case, we are actually predicting gender, which is funny, it's just a dummy variable that we did, but just to show you how to use logistic regression for your further analysis. Um, if you want to predict something else, you can just put that, that variable first and then use the rest of them as predictor variables. And then the last one is uh, random forest I want to show you. So again, first variable is the one that you are trying to predict, then the data set that you're using. And then once the it runs, you do the var plot to see the results. 
and I'll zoom in so you can see. So this shows the most important variables and the uh, and the drop. You can see in the um, MSC the age is one of the most important predictor variables than gender. And from our initial analysis for the class first, we noticed that age, both age and gender affect significant, significantly the earnings. Then we can look into the note purity, and again, age is one of the highest, and then education is the second. So there are lots of documentation on which one to use and which one to go with. Um, you can look at that. As you can see, the, um, the scales are different as well. That's why the difference between the variables distance is different as well. So just pay attention to those details. And then last is just looking into the importance of the variables. It's the same um, information that the graph provides, except in numbers. Okay, this should be it. You should be able to do your homework based on this.